Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We magnify you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Honor you. Thank you, Lord. Mighty name of Jesus. Good morning, everyone. How are you? How's everyone today? Amen. You're full of the power and the anointing of God. That's how you are today. You're what the word says about you. You're looking in that perfect law of liberty of James. That's who you are. If you're watching our live stream, please, please enter into praise and worship with us this morning. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness, Father. We thank you for your goodness, Lord God. You never change, Lord God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we, we just lift up our voices to you. We hope you enjoy our worship unto you this morning, Father. We'll start with this chorus. Lord, I need you, Lord, I need you, every hour Sing it out if you know it. Lord, I need you. I'm just occupied.
my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you, you're my, you're
Where the 
praised. You will be praised. Your angels and saints will see you early. How are you, Lord? You will be praised. You will be praised. Your angels and saints will see you early. Are you Lord? You will be praised. You will be praised. The praise of the saints we sing holy. Are you Lord? And that's why I sing your praise, Lord. Ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise, Lord. Ever be on my lips. Ever be on my list, your praise will ever be on my list, ever be on my list, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my list, ever be on my list, ever be on my list, your praise will ever be on my list. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips.
You are so great. You are so great. Yeah. You are so great. Oh, how we love you. How we love you. Oh, my goodness. Man, I love the new songs and the old songs. Some of those we haven't sung in years. That was really awesome. So sweet. God is so good. You know, we I don't remember saying that in a long time, but that was... That was so good. The worship was so sweet. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all very much. Yeah, I like it when y'all do this little, what do you call this thing? Acoustic. Oh, okay. I like that. We can do it different every every time. And sometimes we have, uh, well, it's it was really sweet. That was really, really sweet. I love it. You know what? Let's take a moment and we're going to uh, just keep playing. That sounds beautiful. We're going to take a moment to pray for Javana Dora. They are ministering at in Guadalajara, Mexico today. So I think it's that way. So let's stretch our hands that way to Javana Dora and uh, to, to believe that he said their service last week was absolutely amazing. Yeah. So they'll be coming back on Thursday. Wait and, a minute. Uh, so, I wish your Guadalajara is that way. The Which big, way is the going? big chicken's that way. I don't know if I go. Which way is going? Hard. Okay. Well, we're going that way. All right, we're going that way. We're just in one accord. Whatever yeah. it is. Okay, All ready, right. babe? Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We just lift up Juvan, our son, and Dora, our daughter-in-law, in Guadalajara, Mexico. Lord, is a ministering at Nueva Vida Church this morning, Lord. We thank you, Father, that your the anointing, Father, is strong on them, Lord. We thank you, Father. People are being delivered and set free, Lord. And that, Father, they're just enjoying the presence of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing them back home safely, Lord, on Thursday. And we just give you glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Y'all can be seated. Yeah. want to also announce that Love You is this Saturday. Everybody say this Saturday. This Saturday. And for those of you who don't know what Love You is, it's short for Love University. We started a Bible school this year, and uh, we meet one Saturday a month. And I'm telling you, if you didn't hook up this year, then definitely hook up next year. It's only one Saturday a month. It doesn't cost anything to you, just your time. It has absolutely been fantastic. So those students, uh, remember, this Saturday, Love University just wanted to remind you. So we're excited about that. And you want to share about March 31st? Yes. Um, how many of you heard me mention about March 31st before? All right. I particularly need to mention this since today is what, March the 7th. Oh, happy, tomorrow is mine and Regina's 41st wedding anniversary to the March. So. Can y'all hear me? And we are still on our honeymoon. Isn't that Amen. awesome? We. It's wonderful. I love being married to you, sweetheart. Okay. Some people All say, right. stop that mushy. 
We're going to be doing it at the 81st wedding anniversary. So, <laughs> If Helen, Jesus tarries. If Jesus tarries, he might be back for the second load by then. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, um, if you haven't heard the, the, the March 31 uh, word that I gave back on September 27th, I want to uh, just reiterate it real quickly. Um, the Lord gave me a word on Sunday, September 27th, up, as I, before I came up here on the platform, and this that God was warning the people that are in the Solid Rock of Atlanta, part, visited the Solid Rock of Atlanta, part of the Solid Rock, watching on live stream, whatever, any way, shape, or fashion associated with this church, that God wants to do supernatural things in your life between the 27th of September and March 31 of 2021. So we're at, as I said, we're at March 7 right now, but we've had so, so many testimonies. We had testimonies last week of healing, testimonies of, of healing provision. Healing of cancer. And, and Amen. what? Marcella healed of cancer. Marcella, Marcella totally Amen. healed of That's cancer. Awesome. It's amazing. And oh, by the way, if you weren't here last Sunday, I don't know if you were here and you, or you didn't watch on live stream, we had uh, Ellen, Fred's wife, Ellen, she just... Uh, the Spirit of God, she was actually, Mar Martinez went over and ministered to her. One of our young people went over and ministered to her. And next thing you know, Ellen threw her cane down and went running, running around, around the, the whole sanctuary. <laughs> I mean, she was going mock, mock two speeds with afterburners on. And I mean, she, she, it was amazing. And then Beverly Green came in with with, with uh, crutches on because she'd been dealing with an arthritic situation. But it was very serious very in her serious knee, and she couldn't walk. She couldn't really walk, and uh, so she th she just power God hit her. She was run da running God, down God here. Her yeah, crutches. threw the crutches down and everything, <laughs> and it was just powerful. Had a lot of people that we prayed over for sleep apnea and 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 sleeping problems, and we had a testimony out of that already this morning. So the healing power of God is well and alive today. Amen. The finished work of the cross. So. Anyway, I go back to March 31, by March 31, but there's things you've taken off the table before in your life. I can't do it. I believe God long enough. I'm, 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 I'm spent. I've, run, I've burned out. Forget it. I'll move on to something else. God says if you've taken it off the table and it was in your heart and you know he placed it in your heart, resurrect it right now. Put it back up on the table right now. He wants to bring it to pass. He didn't give you, put it that in your heart to frustrate you. He put it in your heart to bring it to pass. Amen. And he's going to get the glory out of that. So we've had testimonies after testimony. They've been going on for, for months. And some of the Sundays, we've had three and four testimonies up here. And it's been really, really amazing. But how many of you know Sozo? Talking about salvation. Sozo, the word for salvation in the Greek, means, means protection, means deliverance. It means healing. It means provision. So whatever area of your life that you're you're uh, god's bringing things in supernatural and it's just and you're being blessed then we want to hear your testimony amen in fact fred come on up here and uh, let me as fred comes up let me remind everybody that greg fritz how many of you know greg fritz a teacher a great teacher he's been here many times greg lives in um at, out in uh, uh tulsa but then Greg is uh, will be in here ministering two weeks from the day. Two weeks Which from the day. Which is the church's 23rd, 23rd anniversary. anniversary. Amen. Day. Hallelujah. Yes, that day. So two weeks from the day, Greg Fritz. And if you want to find out more about him, if you don't know, go on uh, Andrew Womack's uh, Gospel Truth TV. And he has a program on there. And uh, he's a really great teacher. In fact, what's so wild about this? How many, five years, Fred? Is it five years? Six years. Six years ago, Greg Fritz was ministering on a Sunday morning here. And Fred and Ellen live in Adairsville. Anybody know where Adairsville is? It's a long if you, way If you know where here. Cumberland Mall is and you know where Chattanooga is, it's halfway, halfway between those between. two places. And they've been, anyway, they came here because they were on Greg, list, uh, Greg Fritz's mailing list. And so they came here, never been here, never heard of the church, anything else. And here they are six years later. Coming they're, every They're Sunday. leaders in the church and <laughs> drive here. Every time the doors open, they're here. So God is so good. And Fred's got another testimony. They had one, uh, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago, you and Ellen were up here. Oh, was it last week? Two weeks ago. All right. Now Fred's got another one. All right. Let us hold it. God blesses us so much. And a lot of things we take for granted. I have a well. I have a very good job. Um, last Monday, 
They informed me that I got a raise, and I'm going, and the largest bonus. that I've ever gotten from this company, bigger than anything. And it's, it's all him because it's not anything that we can do. Put your trust in him, claim. I knew I was gonna get a raise. We claimed a raise and we got it. It's not, oh, well, maybe not. No, it's a done deal. And it happened that was retro, retro on the 1st of March. We get the bonus on the 16th. Man, it's Hallelujah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome news. That's wonderful. I tell you what, you know what? That's important, y'all. And 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 never settle. Don't settle when it comes to healing. Don't settle when it comes to your finances. He has blessed us. The Bible says he became poor that we might be rich. Rich. You Don't know? settle when so it comes to get relationships more too. And do you more know, for the kingdom of God. Anything that's important to God is important to you. And, and what's important person. to you Amen. is important to God. Hallelujah. So that's awesome. And, and like I said, in the healing testimonies, we're very excited about all of that as well. So um, maybe today, last week we had such a Holy Ghost service, man, I didn't get to preach our message last week, so we're no, going to preach it didn't today. Get to preach. Nope. But it was great. It was a great service. It was amazing. Totally amazing. Hallelujah. Well, I, I think we've made all the announcements so far. Okay. Did somebody as, else have a testimony? Did we leave somebody out? That was supposed to testify today? Okay, because I, I, I was, we didn't want to leave anybody out that had something, that, a testimony you wanted to share. Hey, March 31st is right around the corner. It so is. I said, grab a hold of it, you That's know. Right. And it, what was so amazing is a lot of the, these people, their testimony had to do with something that was going to happen to them on March 31st. I think, I think that's why God gave Van that particular date. So that's very exciting. Amen. If you're a first-time visitor here uh, you've never been to this church before. If we could get you to raise your hands, please. Our ushers have visitor packs in the aisles that they would like to give out, distribute to you, if you could, please. Inside there is a, let's give the visitors a big hand, please. Thank you. Inside's a visitor's card that we'd ask that you take it out, fill it out. And in just a few minutes, we'll be receiving the tithes and offerings for the Solid Rock of Atlanta Church. There'll be buckets down here to receive any cash or, or checks um, and then we also have online giving, but, uh, when you, when th those are brought down, then if you'll bring down at the same time, if you'll bring down, um, uh, your visitor card and just throw it in one of these buckets, we sure would appreciate it right after service is over with. If you're a first time visitor right after service, um, Mark and Sharon J, uh, Mark's right here, dragging this rug off the stage right here. And, uh, Sharon is right here on the second and, uh, they are over our lighthouse groups. Lighthouse groups are like cell groups or home Bible groups. And we have about 14, 15 around Metro Atlanta. I can't, and then, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Oh yeah, they are meeting this week. This week, they, cause they meet every other week in the Metro area. And so this is the, this is the week that they'll be meeting. So Mark and Sharon will be meeting with you. If you can take a few minutes right after service and go back through these double doors in the back of the sanctuary, um, they'll be glad to talk to you about the uh, lighthouse groups and one this meeting in your area. Um, it's amazing. Uh, it's just uh, the lighthouse groups are really just really taking off and really doing very well. And we're very happy about that because that's another um, avenue for a relationship and another avenue for getting the word out and for discipling people. And we're really excited about that. So anyone else still need a visitor's card? All righty. We want to go ahead and receive the tithes and offerings for the Solid Rock of Atlanta Church right now. If you need an envelope for a record of your cash giving, if you would, please raise your hands up nice and high. And our issues will get you an envelope. On that envelope, please put your first name, your last name, uh, all the pertinent information and your designation of cash on there. If you're writing a check, you just write it out to the Solid Rock of Atlanta, just like it is behind us on our logo right there, the Solid Rock of Atlanta. And um, if you're giving online, you go to the Solid Rock of Atlanta dot org dot o r g, and you go to our. Uh, it'll take you to our the giving place on our website, and when you do that, and it'll say menu, I think first, and then giving after that, and uh, follow the prompts after that. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Thank you, thank you, Jesus. How many of you know it's impossible to outgive God? 
You can try. In fact, God said in, in Malachi, put me to the test. Prove me is what he says. And he doesn't say that all over the Bible, but he does say that there. And he says, put me to the test. Prove me. If when you sow and you give, if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings, you won't have room enough to contain. And I'll rebuke Satan, the devour on your behalf. Man, that's a, that's a good promise right there. And he says, and, and all, all throughout the New Testament, he talks about giving and sowing and seed time and harvest and, and, and reaping. And, and oh, it's just it's such a process. And I've said this before, when Regina and I first got married back in 1980, I didn't know anything about tithes and offerings or anything like that. And man, she didn't nag me or anything else. She just prayed for me secretly, not but not in front of me. Hey, Lord, make this scumbag become a giver. She didn't do that kind of stuff like that. She just prayed for me secretly, secretly in the secret place of the Most High. And I didn't even know what was happening until one day I got, got a revelation of it. And then I tried to start giving everything we had away. I mean, we weren't hardly making anything back in those days, back in that time. And so I was just wanting to get, she said, no, 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 you don't have to give everything away. We just start, God wants you to start right where you are. And there's no condemnation. And we learned from that point forward, which would have been about, we married in March of 80 and probably sometime in 81 or up to 82. I got a revelation of it. And which has been right at 40 years ago and we've never looked back we've sowed bountifully and we've reaped bountifully and that's the promise of the lord that's the promise of the lord hallelujah father we thank you father for these tithes and offerings lord we thank you father it's going to expand your kingdom lord it's going to to bring uh the word of god propagate the gospel lord all over the place lord we do love you so much father we give because we love you we give because we trust you lord we trust you Lord, your word says, if, if you can't be f uh, faithful over the little thing in mammon, which is the least in the kingdom, who, how can he make you rule over much? Father, we are faithful over little, and we are faithful over mammon, Lord, and you can make us all ruler over much. We thank you for it. We give you praise, glory, and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. If you have cash, if you have uh, uh, envelopes or anything like that or checks, you please feel free to bring them up and put them, our visitor cards, but feel free to bring them up and put them in the buckets right now. And also you can continue giving on live stream um, on, uh, on the, our website on uh, through the giving online. Also on, li on uh, live stream, folks, we thank you so much for your the blessing of your tithes and offerings coming on live stream. We really appreciate it. And they're going to, to a, a very good cause and use and, of the kingdom of God and, and the, the things that God has us to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are the youth staying in? Or are they are going out? Okay, we want to go ahead and dismiss the youth to your meetings at this time, please. Hallelujah. And when Javan is here, he's either given a gospel nugget during this time frame or he's sometimes he's teaching. We'll have him teach again in the next couple of weeks uh, once he gets back to get settled from Guadalajara. All right, baby, you ready? Wow. It's, it seems strange to us because we're starting early. We may get out early. No, we may get out early. Then you can meet all the other churches to the restaurants. Yeah, that's right. Of course, I'm not making any promises. No. No, it never happens. No. <laughs> she said that never happens. <laughs> hey, y'all, we're just real around here, aren't we? Isn't it fun? We yeah. like being real, huh? That's <laughs> you know, it's so funny because Van and I, we used to teach separately, and, and who Up knows, we may, we may do it ago. again sometime. But yeah. two years ago, we decided we were going to do a series together, and then we did One series. That, it, it just never stopped. Yeah. <laughs> it just never stopped. But we enjoy doing this. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, you know, we've been talking about a great awakening, and I, I you know what, y'all, we can, we can start a great awakening right now. We don't have to wait for some magical moment because mm -hmm. it's not a magical moment it's supernatural impartation from the holy spirit and 
Um, you know, you, you remember, uh, well, last week we didn't preach on this, but the week before, um, we were, we were talking about the Brownsville revival, and we, what we did is we've been talking about different uh, revivals and, and Great Awakenings throughout history. And um, in the Brownsville revival, uh, which began, it was on Father's Day of June, it was June 18, 1995, and Diane Sawyer on the 2020 show described a Great Awakening, and I thought this was amazing that here a news person would, would describe it this way. She said, a period in which a spiritual fervor sweeps over the land. I mean, think about that. When a spiritual fervor sweeps over the land, and I'd like it to just start right here. Let's just sweep it from right here and let it spread out from here all over. And, uh, you know, as you know, last week we went out uh, doing some street witnessing and evangelizing in, in um, um, what's the park? Chastain Park. Chastain Park. We went to Chastain Park and, and saw some really great things happen and, we're going to be doing that more frequently and, and doing it at around once a month or so at least and, and uh, even taking our youth teams out there and uh, or to different places and just shining the light of Jesus because that's that's what it's all about. And I I just, uh, anyway, I, I when I heard Diane Sawyer, I think that was the one that said it. Yeah, anyway, it she said, a period in which the spiritual fervor sweeps over the land. And I thought, you know what? That's really when in the in the Great Commission in the Gospels, at the end of every gospel, the Lord commissioned us to go out and witness and to minister the gospel in the uttermost parts of the earth and to go around everywhere preaching the good news. And what is the good you know, the good news is different than religion. We're not about religion here. We're not about we're about the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, when we first started the church and we were downtown and we were we were um, an inner city ministry at the time, and and some of you know the story, but we got this big. Uh, it was a it was called we called it the Mickey bus because um, it was given to us from somebody who, it on the outside of it it was green and had this big Mickey Mouse on it, and they used it down in Orlando and and uh, anyway somebody just gave yeah, it to us. One of the us. rental cars had them down there. Yeah, who I've heard. <clears throat> No, no. Anyway, whoever it was that Alamo. had that Alamo. had that had that, and they they gave us the bus, and and we had it painted white, and on it we put the Solid Rock of Atlanta with our logo. Had the Solid Rock of Atlanta. We're about the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, every once in a while, you know, a lot of times people would honk and wave and be all excited, and other times they weren't too thrilled about that. But you know what? As long as we continue to spread the love of Jesus, y'all. We want our lights to shine so bright that there is nothing dark anywhere around us. Amen. And you know, when your light is shining so bright, oftentimes you just go out and you don't even have to say a word. You just live. Just live your life. And the people see the light of Jesus. You know, you can go to a restaurant and you can tell when a, a waiter or a waitress has Jesus. And that's how we even met Dora because her aunt was our waitress at a Golden Corral. It was so funny. We went to the Golden Corral because we were, back then we were trying to lose weight and, and we went on that Atkins diet where you eat all the meat you can. So we said, well, let's just go over to Golden Corral and we'll eat a bunch of meat. And I mean, you know, green vegetables and a bunch of meat. You know, I mean, it, 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 so we were there and, and Dora's aunt walks up to us and I'm telling you what, her light and the great awakening coming, flowing out of her, could not have shined any brighter. I mean, she was literally glowing. You could see it a mile away. And she walked up and we said, you must be a Christian. And we went back there because we enjoyed her so much. You know, a waiter or a waitress can make or break a meal. You know what I'm talking about? They can make it totally miserable or you can just leave there just skip it. You know, and so anyway, she just made it so, but her light was shining so bright. And the joy of the Lord and one thing led to another, and here Dora is going to school in Mexico, and and they ended up hooking Javan and Dora up together, and that's been 17 years ago? 2003. Yeah. So anyway, but y'all, I'm just telling you, what we want you to understand is we're not waiting for, we're not waiting for some great miraculous thing. We want to be trailblazers. And let's start it here now today, and let's be that light. That's shining. You know, let us be the ones that are going to be, people are going to say, just like what's happening with Mario Morello right now. 
you know. Um, but that, and he'll tell you about that in a second. But I just, it is, it's so amazing because I want people to say, man, you know what's happening in Solid Rock? Jesus is happening at Solid Rock. Amen. Mario Morello, how many of you have heard of Mario Morello before? He's been around forever. In fact, Andrew Womack is, I think, year 52 of his ministry, and he'll be, uh, Andrew will be 72 next month. And, uh, but Mario is just in that same time frame, and Mario yes. just, you know, this, this is his time. You know, he had a time, big time in the 60s and the 70s, and, you know, he still had his ministry going there, but, man, this, this, this last two, three years and now moving forward, he is just, this is what he was made for, created for. And he's recently said that this great awakening is about to sweep over the United States. And you know what? what I've, this is what I personally believe about it, and I really believe this is right. This sweeping is not, oh, well, they've got a revival here in Pensacola. they got a revival. No, this is a sweeping thing across the United States, and it will not stop. Ooh, amen. It's not something to reflect back on and tell your children about or tell your neighbors about or your grandchildren. I mean, it's going to all blend in from one city to the next city, and it's just going to be there, and it's going to be there until Jesus comes back. And it's going to just, you know, there's going to be pockets that are more powerful going on at certain times than over here, but it's just going to be from coast to coast. And it's Amen. just amazing. And I, I, what our whole thing is here, we're not looking for notoriety. We just want to no. be in the ball. We want to be in the huddle. We want to be in part of the game. We don't want to be on the <laughs> sidelines looking in. We want to be in the game. And, and uh, Jesus wants every one of us to be in the game. He wants us to. And he'll he'll give us the he'll give us the uh, the, the the signs and the huddle. He'll he'll tell, clue us in on everything. What do you got to What do you got to know? This, that, and the other. Because the Holy Spirit is leading this. This will not be where man is exalted in. This will not be a a, a preacher Amen. or a pastor or a minister or evangelist trying to make a name for himself. It's everybody making a name for Jesus. Is what it is. <laughs> Jesus already has the name, but glorifying that name, exalting that name. There's power in that name, and that the name that's exalted above any other name, and that's all. That's all. And I believe the mega pastors and the pastors of the small churches and the medium-sized churches, that facade is coming down, and the, that schism between the different churches are coming down. The Amen. power of God, that that power Amen. of God that raised Jesus, Jesus from the dead, the lives in every side, side of each one of us. Amen. And they, a lot of people that have not been uh, understanding that is going to grab a hold of that and say, "Wow, I got that same Jesus in us as at me as you do in you." And the power multiplied Amen. over and unified is going to be like I said, from coast to coast. And Amen. powerful. Not saying it's not over the rest of the world. It will be. But this is our will be our uh, our local domain right now. Who knows what will be affecting meaning as far as individually other parts of the world or other states or whatever else. But we want to be doing Amen. our part. We're not trying to do somebody else's part. We want to do our part. Amen. Is he still meeting every night, Mario? Is well, uh, at least several times a week. Did anybody ever watch Mario on Flashpoint well, along with Gene Bailey and, and yeah, a lot of the other people, good. Lance Wall now and everything? It comes on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights and it's on Kenneth Co Copeland's channel, Victory on channel. Victory Channel. Yeah. And man, it's just, it's been, they've only had it for a short period of time and it's just amazing. It has a great viewership and everything. Gene Bailey, uh, the, 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 the MC of that, he's the CEO of, uh, of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And um, speaking of that, we had some friends over the weekend. The, the former C, uh, Paul and uh, Paul and Patsy Milligan, and Paul and Patsy, where Paul was the CEO of Andrew Womack Ministries from 2014 until about a year ago, and we've been friends with them for 17 years. And they they have moved, actually moved to North Carolina up in Wake Forest, North Carolina. And they called and said, "We we're going to Texas to our granddaughter's." Uh, wedding, and uh, then we're going on to board the Andrews board meeting uh, because they're still on the board of directors there. And can we come see you? And so they came Thursday and stayed with us until Saturday, and we had a great time. And Paul's just a mighty man of God, and Billy Epperhart is now CEO of, which who's been a friend of Paul's for 30 years. He's CEO of Andrews Ministry, and so Paul Paul did a great thing during those five years as CEO of that of that uh, of Andrew Womack Ministries. It, it took off like crazy. But I say all that to say this. <clears throat> these people like Paul Milligan, these people like uh, Billy Epperhart, this current CEO of, of Andrew Womack, Gene, Gene uh, Bailey of, of, of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, these folks are strategically placed by God at this point in time. 
and they are spirit filled. They know they're full of the power of God. They're helping these uh, ministers, you know, with their ministry and everything That's else right. and helping them take them to different levels. But they're not doing it at the expense of people. You're not building somebody, their vision on people's backs. How many of you know that's wrong? You do not build, you don't, you're not supposed to build any kind of church or ministry or evangelism. You don't do it by a vision. You have a vision because my people perish or cast off all restraint without a vision, but you are led by the Spirit of God. You're not led by a vision. You're led by the Spirit of God. And that's what, what's happening with those, those ministries and two in particular that I'm very familiar with. And that's what here is the same, same thing. We, are, we have vision, Regina, I've had a vision for this for decades, but we will never build it on somebody's back. We are building our it by main, the Spirit of our God. Our main purpose, yes. y'all, is to help you find your purpose and yes. your destiny. And when then you we do fulfill that, our vision. we when fulfill our vision. When you find your spot, yes. then that's fulfilling our vision. Exactly. And that's really what a pastor is supposed to do. To Absolutely. The Quickly for the, the work, work of the ministry. ministry. That's exactly right. Also, Sid Roth on a post on Facebook uh, his Facebook page, he wrote last week, and it was just a small blip, and he wrote this, and I wrote this down. In fact, I had it, it was last Sunday morning, and I was going to mention it as being on Facebook today, but Sid said, imagine, my friend, the harvest of souls, which will be incalculable. You know what that means? Can't be calculated. It's beyond, it's just out there. I mean, it's just it's just multiplication, you know, it's, 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 it's it compound multiplication. You won't be able to, to, and it's not about tallying. It's not about tallying how many souls you got that day. People won over stuff and it's another notch on your gun belt. That's not like that way at all. It's about bringing people into the kingdom and not just bringing them into the kingdom, but discipling them, making disciples. Because if you don't do that, they, a big percentage of them will just return back to where they came from or wander off. But if they're disciples, they'll be in it for the long haul. Amen? You know what, yeah. y'all? We have to realize that Right now, with the COVID situation the way it's been and, and throughout the world, I mean, people are f- afraid. There is fear that is consuming people all around the world. Yeah. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous. And we have the answer being Jesus. And, you know, I just, I have to share this testimony, and, and, and y'all heard it last week, but I just want to share this because it was so powerful. You know, last week before we went out and we went to the park, to minister, we were talking to, to the ones that were, there were about 30 of us waiting to go out, and we were telling them, how do you approach people? You know, a lot of people are afraid to go out and, and minister to people or to, to a complete stranger and minister the gospel and to shine their light, and, and we said, you know what, you find common ground. You find something that, you know, if they have a child, maybe go and, and talk about their child, or if, if they have a ball cap on and it's your favorite team, talk to them about the favorite, man, that'll get somebody going. Mm-hmm. You know, talk to them about their team, or talk to them, find common ground, or just walk to, up to them and ask them how they're doing, or like man has always said, his father always said, you know, to, to really meet people, ask them where they're from. No, you know? no, it's more than that, because when you ask them where they're from, they'll tell you the last place they lived. And are the place before that, and some of them might not be a good memory. But if you say, where are you originally from? It takes them back. There was good back then and some bad back then, but it still takes them back. And it, it doesn't that work, Sharon? All the time, Sharon says. It's good stuff. It really is. But I, I just have to share this. I'm so proud of it. And, and Gabby will be tired of hearing me share this testimony. But I was so proud. And her proud daddy sitting right here. And her mama's up in New Hampshire, right? And, uh, but anyway, y'all, I'm telling you what, and we, we told them, we said, just go to somebody, ask them how they're doing it. Ask, tell them that the Lord loves them. Jesus loves them. And is there anything we can pray with you about? And, and so Gabby and her friend went up and did that. And she's 16, 15, 15 years old. And she walked up to this woman and she just asked her. And the woman said, yes, I, I, uh, would you pray for my daughter? My daughter's 10 years old. And while they were praying, they said, sure, we'll pray for your daughter. So while they were praying for her daughter, um, Gabby was praying to the Lord, asking for a word of knowledge to be able to, you know, to be able to share something with her that would really touch her heart. And so when she did that, she just said, you know what? I just want to let you know that the Lord is giving your daughter the daughter, 10 years old, said, the Lord is giving your daughter a spirit of laughter. And this woman broke down into tears. And she said, you don't know that my daughter has tried to hurt herself. 
And she cried and cried. And then she came and she looked for me and Van. And she said, I just want to thank you for your youth group. She said, I wouldn't have had the confidence to do what they did. But look what they did. And she said, it blessed me so much and gave me hope for my daughter. Y'all, that is what we're talking about. That is a great awakening. That is shining your light. That is going out and letting people see the love of Jesus shine through you. And you'll never know what will come forth from that. Yes. So you're going to see us going from here, doing that a whole lot more. And we're going to have training sessions on how to approach people. Because we've had a lot of people say, man, I've never done this before. Can you help me? Sure. But you know what? The disciples were afraid too. So you know what they did? They went and prayed, prayed for boldness. That's right. They did. And so that's Lord, all grant they your to do. servants boldness. Now, why would they have said that and to the Lord if they didn't have apprehension and weren't afraid? Amen. But they got, God gave them boldness all right, too. Big time boldness. So all of that was just an introduction. That's right. I'm not sure we're going to get it. That was your introduction early. to the introduction, wasn't it? That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, we're going to be teaching on Daniel today. You know, I, I want to talk about, we're talking about different people in the Bible or different times in history where there's been a great awakening and that example and what it is for us. And Daniel, the, the Bible declares about Daniel in the Bible, it says in Daniel 6.3, it says that Daniel has an excellent spirit. So today we're going to talk about what that excellent spirit is. And now, and he made an impact and he had, there was a great awakening because back to what Diane Sawyer said is a period when a spiritual fervor sweeps over the land and it happened through Daniel in the Bible. And he had an impact and made an impact over the province of, of Babylon. So we're going to share about that today and we're going to, we may be sharing more about this next week, but I just want you to, to watch the approach that he had in a very serious and could be frightening situation. All right, sweetheart. Let's look ready? at Daniel 2. Daniel 2. We're going to kind of skip around some verses. Some, some will be contiguous and some will just jump over, but you'll get the gist of everything. Daniel 2, verses 1 and 2. Now the second year of Nebuchadnezzar reigned, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, Amen. and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the commandment to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to, be, to tell the king his dreams. So they came and they stood before the king. Now if you skip down to verse 5 in that same chapter. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, my decision is firm. They all started talking to him in those verses. I just skipped over verse 3 and 4, but they started talking to him, and they basically saying, you know, you are going to tell me the dream and the interpretation. I mean, how many of you know that's off the charts right there? It's one, th <laughs> it's one thing to give the interpretation, and that's miraculous, and that's supernatural, but, oh, by the way, give me my dream and the interpretation. So these astrologers, astrologers and, and magicians and stuff, they're about to lose their mind. In, in verse 5, so the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, both of them, then no pressure, but you shall be cut in pieces. <laughs> and on top of that, your house, houses will be burnt down and made as ash heaps. Other than that, no pressure at all. So. <laughs> so, let's look down at verse 10 then. Let's skip down to verse 10. <laughs> the Chaldeans answered the king and said, and this, I would like to have, I'd like to have a video of this right here. They said, there's not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, any astrologer, or any Chaldean. No one has ever done that. In other words, what they're saying behind the scenes, in, 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 uh, non-verbally, is, King, you have lost your mind. You, what are you smoking? I mean, this is not, <laughs> there is no way... It's impossible. I mean, even if we could give you the interpretation, that would be one thing, but you want us to tell you the actual thoughts you were having, the dreams you were having, 
and then give you the interpretation of that, there is absolutely no way. So then let's look down at verse uh, chapter 2 still. Let's go down, that was 10 we just did, go down to 16. We go look at 16 through 23. And this is what Daniel did in, a, in accordance and his, his, his uh, reaction to all this. So Daniel went in and he asked the king to give him time. How many of you know when you're faced with a dilemma, when you're faced with a major decision, when you're faced with something that's trying to pressure you, what you need is time. Not idle time, not time to go watch Gilgan's Island or time to go do something else. I mean time to be with who? To spend with what? The Lord. Time to spend in his presence. Time with the word. Time of praise and worship. So Daniel went and asked the king to give him time that he may, he might, tell the king the interpretation. I need time to do that. So if it wasn't, he couldn't go read a book on it. He couldn't go, you know, find cliff notes on it. He needed to hear from God is what he's saying. He didn't tell the king that, but that's what he's saying. Verse 17, then Daniel went to his house, made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Now, really, if you, that, they later being, were known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So I don't know which one of them were nicknamed and which was their given name and all that, that but we know them pretty much as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so then, and the, so verse 18 says that they might, all right, he made it known to his friends, his companions there, that in verse 18, that they might seek mercies from God, the God of heaven, concerning the secret, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. See, they were part of this gang. And they didn't, want to, they didn't want to burn any more than they didn't want to be cut in pieces or have their uh, houses burned down either and, and, and left in ashes either. So, you know, it's not like, and, but you know, Daniel had, and Regina said it, Daniel had an excellent spirit. The word declares Daniel had an excellent spirit. When I looked at that, I'll go back up here. When I looked at that uh, excellent in the word, in the Greek that Daniel had, it says, it says, uh, I'm sorry, in the Hebrew, it said preeminent, surpassing, extreme, extraordinary, exceedingly, and extremely. So he had a spirit that just would not quit, is what he had. You know, some people say, man, that person's just over the top. Man, they just go full steam ahead all the time. But you know what? Some people go full steam ahead with things in life that don't matter, that are just busy work, you know? It's like digging a hole and filling it back up. But that's not the way Daniel was. Daniel, he had this extremism, but his extremism was for God and for his word and for, the, for, his, for his desires. And he just wanted to know, who, know God more intimately. And he had that great intimate relationship with him. So verse 18 says that, that they might seek the mercies from, from, the, uh, from the God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the, sec then the secret was revealed because they, they purposed and had time and set aside time to seek God and to seek his, his, his mind, the mind of, of, of Christ, really, even though Christ hadn't manifested that time yet, but it's still the God of Abraham and Isaac and J mm -hmm. Jacob. So the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision in verse 19. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings. He raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you. O oh God of my fathers, you have given me wisdom and might and have not now made known to me what we ask of you, for you have made known to us the king's demands. So not only did he get in God's presence all the way down through verse 23 in chapter 2, 16 through 23, he got in God's presence, but he heard God's heart. He heard God's direction. He heard God reveal to him these secrets of the dream, of, of, of Nebuchadnezzar's dream 
of what the dream actually was to be able to recite it and then the interpretation of that dream. God gave him that, but he gave it to him in his presence and seeking after him and glorifying him and praising him. And you'll see at the end that Daniel was just thanking God and praising him and with a thankful heart and just realizing, yeah, there's no way on the planet I could have done this. None of the magicians, astrologers could have done this. And I am so thankful to you for, for doing that, Lord. And what we're going to do here in a minute, we're going to, we, Regina and I are going to spend some time breaking down that, what transpired between uh, that Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, verse 16 and verse 23, that prayer that he prayed with, with uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Um, Verse, in fact, in, let's, let's, let me just say this about that and we'll start breaking down. It says, so Daniel, I'm going to reiterate that part again and read it in its entirety and then we'll start breaking it down. So once again, uh, Daniel 2, 16 through 23. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time, so important, that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and uh, Azariah, his companions, that they might seek the mercies from the God of heaven concerning the secret, so that Daniel and his, his companions might not perish with the, vast, with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night, a vision, so Daniel asked the God of heaven. And it said, so and Daniel blessed, blessed yes. the God of heaven. Yes. You know, and I want you to think about that. Put yourself in Daniel's shoes. You have been told along with the, the magicians and the soothsayers and the, you know, all these people that the king was expecting for the dream to be told. I mean, think about it. Either you will tell me my dream and tell me exactly what I dreamed and then interpret it, or I will not only kill you, I will cut you into pieces and burn your house down. No room for error there. I mean, so Daniel could have approached this two ways. Yeah. He could have come in with so much fear and said, God, man, you're going to have to help me out here because, you know, I mean, if I don't do this, they're going to, he's going to cut me into pieces. Not one time did you hear Daniel say that to mm -hmm. the Lord. Not one time did you hear Daniel come up to the Lord with anything other than an expected end and, right. and believing God. Not one time did you see him in fear. He comes and he approaches the Lord. He blessed the Lord. He blessed God of heaven. Expecting that God had the answer and he was going to give it to him. And it said, you know, and, and this is something we want to do. We're going to give scriptures that we can all hold on to because we want to have that example in our own lives. I don't think anybody's ever told any one of us. I know they haven't told us, man, if you don't tell me what my dream was and then interpret it, I'm going to cut you into pieces. And burn your house down. And burn your house down. I, and nobody's ever even told me they were going to cut me into pieces for any reason. Or even slap me in the head. You know, I mean, think about it. You know, I, I want you to grab a hold of the position that Daniel is in. Y'all, this is very serious. Picture yourself there. How are you going to approach God? Oh, God, help me. They're going to kill me if I don't do it this way, if I don't do it that way. No, he didn't even whine. He didn't cry. He didn't shed a tear. He came with confidence. I mean, y'all, this is serious. I, I want you to grab a hold of this. So in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of what? Peace. peace. Thoughts of what? Peace. Peace. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. What is evil? To be cut into pieces and have your house burned down. Uh, but thoughts of peace. To give you what? An expected end. Not a, oh, Lord, if you don't do this, my expected end is going to be, they're going to cut me into pieces and my house is going to be burned down. I, I, we're trying to make a point here, y'all. I know we're, we're belaboring the point, but we want you to grab a hold of this. It says here, and, and you will have an expected end. He gives you, he said, I'll give you an expected end to where you can believe me and trust me. And it says, um, but look what it says then. And then you shall call on me, which was what Daniel did, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. He, you go and you pray to me. Daniel told the king, just give me some time. Mm -hmm. Not time to plan anything, but time to spend with the Lord. You cannot hear from God if you don't go spend time with him. Time. If you choose to make a decision without spending time with the Lord, chances are you might make the wrong one. Mm -hmm. 
So you have to have that time with the Lord. So it says here, and then it call on me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken to you, and you shall seek me and find me when? When you search for me with all, all of your, your heart. heart. Yes. And that's what Daniel did. Yes. Now, what Daniel did, and one thing, if we carry this on next week, which, which I believe we're carrying this on next week, um, what Daniel did is he took along once he's discipling Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he's telling them, and we'll go into this next time, he's telling them, this is what we have to do. So let's go spend time with the Lord. And he's teaching them because, as you know, then later they deal with something. Which we'll, we'll go into that later. But I, I want you to get this. So he's spending time. He didn't even tell them, man, we're going to be cut into pieces if we don't do this right. He didn't tell them that. No. No. Let's go seek the Lord and he's going to give us the answer. That's right. He's looking for the expected end with a promise. Yes. That God's going to do it. That God's going to show it to him. But he had to seek him with all his heart. And Amen. Cast not away your confidence, which has great reward. Yeah, we're going to do that scripture yes, in a minute too. Absolutely. All right. All right. Verse 20 said, Daniel said, as, we, as we're expounding on all this, verse 20 said, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. And I, I love it when the, the word says that. When you just say forever, that means forever. But he drives the point home forever and ever. You know, I mean, that's just like, if you don't get it, man, it's just, there's, there is no end. There is no limitation forever and ever. And then it says, for wisdom and might are his. For wisdom and might are his. In James 1, 5 through 8, y'all, it says, if you lack wisdom, and I guarantee you, in a situation like that, you're going to feel like you lack wisdom. Mm -hmm. It says, when you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all, what, liberally? liberally. Yes. Liberally. And without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. Now, in this prayer, not one time did you see Daniel doubting that God would do this. Now, this is a very serious being. Man, you are, it's either, it, this, is a, this is a for sure life and death situation. That's right. That's right. And if you believe God's going to do this for you, or you're going to die. And that's the position that Daniel was put in. And it says, let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. You didn't see any doubt in Daniel whatsoever. And he's teaching that to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego by example. Um, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea that's tossed by the wind. Yeah. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now... It's not because the Lord hasn't already given it. That's right. It's that he hadn't had the faith to receive it. See, when Jesus, now this, that is old, the, the, in the Old Testament, this is New Testament, but in the Old Testament, man, Daniel was in the Old Covenant. He didn't have a finished work of the cross like we all have. Mm -hmm. We have a finished work of the cross, yes. folks. And we can expect. Game changer. Everybody say game changer. Man, that's a serious game changer. Amen. Because when you have the finished work of the cross, he has already provided the answers. Yes. He has already he, given everything yes. you've ever needed. Yes. He has already provided the health. Yeah. He has already provided the healing. Yeah. He has already provided the finances. He yeah. has already provided the deliverance. Now it's up to us just to receive yes, it. That's right. It's up to that's us right. to say, yes, Lord, yes, I believe Lord. and I will yes. not doubt. Believe I receive. believe yes. and I celebrate you, Lord. Yes. Well, Daniel, in the old covenant, oh my gosh, y'all, in the old covenant, and this man is blessing the Lord because I know you're giving me the answer. He didn't even doubt that the answer would be given to him. Also in Hebrews 10, 35, the verse man was bringing up a while ago, therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Man, you cannot lack confidence if somebody's telling you they're going to cut you into pieces and burn your house up. You can't. You better know your God. Man, you better, you better know your God. When cancer screams out at you, you better know your God. Is that right, Marcella? And here she is, totally healed. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Not a cancer cell in her body Amen. anymore. Amen. You better know your God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But it says here, for you have need of endurance. 
What did Daniel do? He went and took time to spend with the Lord and patience. And he wanted the king to just have patience with him. Just give me some time. I'll do this for you. You just give me the time to be with my God and to spend time with my Lord, to hear from him the answer. Um, And it says, for after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. You will. Amen. And I'm going to talk about the verse 20, 20, read verse 21 again of that prayer. But let me say this too. Fear is the expectation of evil. Faith is the confident expectation of good. I didn't say confident on the evil part. I said confident on the faith part. Confident expectation of good. Something good going to happen. I serve a good God. Confident expectation. And remember, there again, and we beat, we beat this dead horse to death all the time. It's not your faith you're believing God with. He gave you. We couldn't even have gotten saved. He gave us the faith to receive him. To receive him as our Lord and Savior and to be born again. And we're using his faith. Ooh, glory to God. Faith is one of the fruits of the Spirit, you know. We're, but it's his faith we're using to believe. He's, 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 it's, it's, Galatians 2.20 says, it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And it even says, the, in the flesh, the life I now live in my That's flesh. That's the rest of it. Yeah. In the flesh. Yes. But you live it by the faith, faith of, of the, the Son of God. God. How yes. do you do that? You have to get out of the flesh right. into the spirit. And recognize and his faith. And that's why it talks about Daniel having an excellent spirit. So, so people get hung up. So my faith, I just don't have enough faith. Yes, you do. You got the faith of the Son of God. Yeah. And you're using that faith, the faith of the Son of God. So it's not, you're not, that's not even part of the equation. It's just allowing the faith of the Son of God inside of you to you, you, you utilize that. You, you give it permission and you start believing even when everything looks contrary to, to uh, expected end. It looks in your natural, it looks contrary. But faith declares and knows and possesses the faith of God that it's about finished work and part of the finished work of the cross. All right, verse 21 said out of this prayer, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and he raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. You know, in Proverbs 2, verse 6, it says, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Then trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Back to this all of your heart thing. All of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Now, Daniel could have easily easily leaned to his own understanding. I, I, I think it would be pretty difficult in that situation to not lean into your understanding, knowing that, man, you're going to be cut to pieces if you don't say this dream right. Y'all, that's a very serious thing. But he's telling you here, don't lean to your understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he then will direct your path. Yes. Man, if you don't get out of your own understanding sometimes, do you know it's the hardest thing for analytical people to receive the miraculous? Yes. Did you hear what I said? It is so hard for analytical people to receive the supernatural because they try to analyze everything and they try to make sense of it. Yes. Yes. Natural but the supernatural it. isn't the sense realm. It's beyond our sense realm, yes. right? Right. right? So, man, to, to believe for God to give you a dream so that you're not going to be cut into pieces, you better get out of your sense realm real quick. Yeah. And you better start saying, God, I know you're going to give me that dream. That's right. And then you can't, once he does give you the dream, you can't second guess yourself and say, well, I wonder if it really meant this. I wonder if this is really what the dream was. What if I don't have it exactly right? Because he said you have to tell me exactly what the dream was. What if I don't, Lord, what if that wasn't, what if that wasn't right? No, you get out of your own sense realm. That's right. That's right. And lean not to your own understanding. Don't question it. And, and you know what? That happens when God gives you a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge for somebody. Don't analyze it. Mm-hmm. 
If you sit there and try to analyze it, you'll talk yourself out of giving it. Did you hear what I said? Or you will try to give an abbreviated thing of what God gave you, or you will expound too much on what you will say more than what God tell you, told you to say. That's right. Because you're trying to make it, you're trying to almost interpret it. This is really what God meant by saying more than what God said to say. If God gives, says, give a word and you, you say umbrella, and I can't say umbrella, God, that won't make any sense. If God says, say umbrellas, don't say an umbrella, say umbrella. Just say exactly what he said to you say. You know, it, it, that reminds me, and I want to share this real quick, but years ago, this was probably yeah. uh, 25 years ago, wow. Man and I were in a meeting, and there was this man who moves out prophetically, and, and he could not continue in his sermon until he walked over to this woman that was sitting, and some of you have heard this, but I'm going to share it anyway because it's really powerful. And God told him, elephant and not whole, just like that, elephant and not whole. You cannot continue to preach until you go over to that lady and say, elephant and not whole. Mm-hmm. And in his mind, he's saying, let that make a lick of sense. No, she's going to think I'm a nutcase. Yeah. And he was walking over that way. And finally, how many of you have not heard this story? Oh, half of you. Yeah. Oh, more, more of you. Y'all, this is so funny. So he stopped. He was walking that way. He stopped and he just shook his head. And he said, I cannot continue this message until I do this. So y'all just bear with me. He walked over there, and the woman was sitting over there. He walked over to her, and he said, I'm sorry, man, but the Lord told me to tell you, and this is all I got, and I'm not going to say another word, mm-hmm. elephant and not whole. She started screaming. Screaming. Y'all, this is serious. And all of us are like, what in the world? He said, well, obviously that means something to you. You want to tell us what that means to you? And she said, I told the Lord that if you didn't come over here and tell me elephant and not whole, I was going to kill myself tonight. Now, do you want to know why? This is why. She said, I've always been so fat. She said, when I was young. When I was young, Mm -hmm. the kids all made fun of me and called me an elephant. And she said, God, why didn't you make me small enough to fit through a knot hole? And so she said, God, I'm taking my life tonight if he doesn't come over here and tell me elephant and not whole. Y'all, that's serious. He didn't try to explain it. He didn't try. He just said, this is all I've got. Elephant and idol. Now, you know what? He could have made a mess of that yeah. if he went up and said, well, you know, the Lord told me elephant and this is what it means. Yeah. Or yeah. not whole and this is what that means. You try to pretty it up and say, you know, you ever seen Barnum and Bailey Circus before? <laughs> and, you know, they've got, they've got walls and they've got this. And, you know, everyone's like, you might see a knot hole. You know, all this kind of dissertation. God didn't say do that. No. He's, but when exactly she said that to the Lord in that service, it delivered her from suicide. Mm-hmm. So that's why we're saying here, you cannot be analytical and move out in the gifts of the Spirit. Now, later on, we're going to be doing some teaching on all the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit, but, um, and how that affects you walking in the light of the world and, and, and being a light and, and shining that light. Um, but... This is, this is important that Daniel, his whole focus right now was blessing the Lord by his faith, really. That's why the Bible said he blessed the Lord, and this is what he said, and that's what we're breaking down this prayer. So that this, this can be our example, y'all, on yes. how we can get through life and death situations. Yes. Now, the... Um, Let me go back here and make sure. In Luke, talking about understanding, it says, for the Lord gives understanding. Well, in Luke 24, 45, and it said, and he, the Lord, opened up their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Do you know the scriptures are where all the answers are? The scripture is where you're going to find your answer because the scripture is Jesus in word form. Yes. The scripture is Jesus. Everything you will ever need is in the scripture. Everything you will need to know is in the scripture. Every answer you have to have is in the scripture. And that's why it says, and he opened up their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Amen? Amen. All right, verse 22 of that same chapter in that prayer, he reveals deep 
and secret things. In Mark 11, it says, and he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He wants us to know. Yeah. And he said, to, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. The Lord wants us to know. He wants us to know. First, you have the mind of Christ. I have given you all wisdom. I have given you all understanding. He wants you to know. He's given you the keys to the kingdom. He has given you the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And even Daniel knew that. He said, if I can go spend time with the Lord, I will know everything that I need to know. Yes. Which is a mystery that the soothsayers and the magicians could not tap into. That's right. That's right. Okay, he knows what is in the darkness and light dwells in him. And as you know, we've been talking about this along the way. In First John 1, uh, I'm sorry, in John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. And in him was life and the light was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness could not comprehend it. So the light, the Lord shined the light on the dream. Mm -hmm. In him was the light and then it eliminated the darkness where everything that needed to be revealed was. Okay. Verse uh, 23 says, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. Now look at what he did. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, be anxious for nothing. That's the, very, the most important thing right. that you can know. You cannot be anxious for anything. I don't care if somebody's going to chop you into pieces. You cannot be anxious because God is going to take care of you. That's right. But it says here, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So it says here, and, and Daniel came and he said, I thank you and I praise you, O God, my Father. He came with a heart of thanksgiving. Yes. No matter what we come to the Lord with, we have to come with that heart of thanksgiving can you, do you know how, how much it means to a Heavenly Father when you come thankful? Yeah. You know, when right. Javan would come to us as a little boy and he would say, thank you so much for my gift. It's so important and special to me. And he would just come with, and you just melt. Because he was thanking you. He wasn't just being selfish and playing with whatever it was and not thanking you. That's the way the Father is with us. When we come to him confident, yeah. Believing who he says he is and that he's going to answer whatever we come to him with and give us all wisdom needed for the situation and we thank him for it before we receive it in the natural. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I thank you that I'm cancer free in Jesus name before the doctor shows you that it's done. That's right. Lord, I thank you that my vision's perfect before you see it in the natural. Lord, I thank you that my finances, that my bills are paid. Lord, I thank you that you made the provision that I need. You're thanking him. You know, once you've asked God for something, That's right. you don't keep asking and asking and asking. You just thank him. You just thank him. Yep. If That's you right. believed you receive it, then That's you right. don't come to him again and say, That's right. okay, Lord, I need this now. After you already prayed about it yesterday and it wasn't quick enough to get to you, so you're thanking, you're asking him again. No, mm -hmm. if you, when do you receive something? When you, when you believe, believe and you, you pray for it, you receive you it at that time. It. That's right. Mark you Lewis. receive it when you ask for it, yeah. and then you just thank him every day that it's finished. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Healing has always been a, a done deal. Yeah. And so it's up to us to say, Lord, I thank you that it's done. It's been done. I thank you that it was done 2,000 years yeah, ago, right. and I believe and I receive it right yeah, now. That's right. Y'all, grab a hold of this. This is so important about anything that you're facing. You ask God and then you thank him. From then on, it's finished. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Did I finish what I was supposed to finish? I get excited up here. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, we said that together. We did. Oh, we right. okay together. We sure did. All right. All right. <laughs> you have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we ask of you. For you have made known to us the king's Demand. You know, in John 15, verse 7 and 8, it says, If you abide in me, 
and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you desire, and it what it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you will bear much fruit. So then you will be my disciples. Y'all, the biggest key in this whole thing is Daniel believed. That's right. He believed and he received and he expected. And he never let go of that great expectation and that end that God had given him and his confidence. He was confident and he knew that God would show him the way. Yes. And you know, we're going to continue down here in verse 26, past this uh, prayer part that we were just uh, dissecting. But it's so important that you grasp about that prayer and you get it in your heart and then you understand in your heart how important and how, how powerful that, that prayer, that conversation that Daniel had with the Lord, with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, because in that, he, he, he didn't come, as Regina said earlier, he didn't come groveling and begging. That's or, right. or, you know, Lord, I don't know if you know the stakes are really high here. All he did was focus on the Word. He focused on God. He, he exhorted God. He extolled God. He, he admonished God and His greatness. And I, you know, I know it's within you to tell us this, Lord. And we thank you, Father. You're going to tell us and reveal this, this uh, dream and, and the interpretation of this dream. And, and we just thank you. So I, I want you, we want you to walk away from that. Really zeroing in on those scriptures parts that we just read out of uh, Daniel chapter 2 knowing there's so much meat in that and so many things actually that we can emulate in our own lives. Yet there again, we live in a better covenant with better promises. So how much more can we do, you know, now of where we are with the finished right. work of the cross? But if the principles remain the same, it's, it's focusing on, on the Lord. And now we focus on the Lord and the finished work of the cross what has already been done. And we realize that same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in each and every one of us. That's, there is no greater power than that, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. All right, if you're looking, uh, still staying in uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 26. Look at verse 26. We're going to look at 26, 27, and 28. The king answered, after all this happened, and, and Daniel told him everything. That they, the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, are you able to make known to me the dream which I've seen and its interpretation that Daniel boldly, confidently, he knew that God had downloaded inside of him. There was no question. Amen. And yes, he could do it boldly and confidently, and he is able to do it. So in verse 27, Dan, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret, he just came right out of the gate. Didn't, he didn't do a bunch of flour to eat anything. He was like a bull in a china shop. He just came right out <laughs> of the gate. And he said, the secret, O king, which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, he wanted to make sure that the king understood that it was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that gave that interpretation to Daniel and not some astrologer or some magician whispered to him on the side. He said, the magicians, the astrologers, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king this. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dreams and the visions on your head, of your head upon your bed were these, or were the following. Here you go, King. Take notes. Get your recorder out because here it is right here. You know what? Let me add this real quick. Look where it says, but there is a God yes. in heaven who reveals secrets. Yes. He didn't take Credit. that upon himself. Right. He humbly spoke. He did. he did. God did this. He never said, look what I've done. Mm -hmm. That's right. Man, when God gives uh, you the answer. Me and God did this together. No. He's my co-pilot. No, hey, none of that without, kind of without yeah, God, yeah. you're nothing. You know yeah, that. Exactly. With God, you're everything. Exactly. But it, you know, that's what we have to understand. Daniel came humbly, but boldly. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying by that? There's a way to be bold and humble. Yeah. In Christ. And confident. And it's right. Yes. And, and when it's set up here, um, uh, when he said, now he's, he's talking to the king like this. He said, the king's secret, no, no, the secret which the king demanded. Now he's telling the king that. Can you imagine him standing before the king and saying, what you've demanded? I don't know that I, I don't. Probably, I would have probably flowered it up a little bit and said that the king requested. Yes. And uh, <laughs> He didn't, he didn't pipe. I mean, he didn't get politically it, no, correct. He no, said, I'm, you, old king, you, this is what you demanded. No, but he was bold. Yeah. 
But yet, y'all, the Lord wants us to be bold. Yes. The, the disciples were in a lot of fear and they asked for boldness. boldness. Grant me, grant us See, all boldness. we need to ask for boldness, yes. but you still need to be humble. That's right. They work hand in hand. You have to be bold, but you've got to be humble. There's a way to be confident and bold and yet remain humble. And he gave all the glory to God. Yes. And he yes. said, but there is a God in heaven who revealed this secret to you. The soothsayers couldn't do it. No. Nope. The magicians couldn't do it. Now, we're not going into breaking down what the whole dream was. It would take no, far too long. That's right. You can go and read that for yourself. Yeah. But the, the, thing, the fact remains that he did. He told the exact mm -hmm. dream. And it's very, very detailed. Hey, wow. You can go and read that. But it, it's very, very detailed. But I appreciate the fact that Daniel was bold. That's his excellent yeah. spirit. But humble. And that's his excellent spirit. And the dream was obviously factual. But that's not where the revelation is that we want to get from that. It's the journey of getting there, of humbling yourself before God and bringing your companions along and all of you humbling yourself before God and hearing his voice and in, in essence, and then in, in turn, um, God downloading inside of you exactly what Nebuchadnezzar needed to hear that's right. correctly. And you know, one thing about that, if you go back to Joseph, you know, J Joseph, the, the son of, of Israel, uh, Jacob, and Joseph, you know, was summoned out of prison to give the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream. But there again, it was the interpretation of the dream, not give me the dream and the interpretation. That's right. Because Pharaoh gave the dream. But so this is that much more miraculous, uh, not to undermine or, or demean what uh, Joseph did. Daniel chapter 2, verse 29. As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while on your bed about what would come to pass after this. And he who, has he who reveals secrets has made known to you what will be. But as for me, the secret has not been revealed to me because I have more wisdom than anyone living. See, that's humility on steroids right there. Because I have, made, have more wisdom than anyone living, but for our sakes who make known the interpretation to the king and that you may know the thoughts of your heart. In other words, God wanted you to know the thoughts of your heart, and he, he gave me all this to give to you, not, well, you know, that's it's, uh, taking any credit. Well, you know, like Barney, well, here in Mayberry, this is, you know, here at The Rock, we do this kind of stuff, <laughs> none of that kind of stuff. This was, this was not, you don't touch God's, <laughs> take credit for anything God's done. You're not even joint credit. He that's gets right. all the glory, and we get to participate. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. In the second half of 45, it says, The great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain. Now, listen to this. This is his confidence. Mm -hmm. He said, This dream is certain yes. and its interpretation is sure. In other words, I am confident that this is the dream. Yes. I'm not even, I, you know, he didn't come to him and say, was this your dream? <laughs> yeah, no, but, he said, this me, is your let dream. Let me try for the best two out of three. Well, you know. <laughs> no, that's right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then only cut half of me up. That's right. God. That's right. And burn half my right. house down. That's right. No, y'all. It's crazy. No, but think about that. I am certain yes. that this is your dream. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And the interpretation is sure. That's right. He knew it. Yes. And the king you know did not deny oh, it. That's right. Y'all, this is good. St Are y'all getting anything out of this? Yeah. This is good stuff. Hallelujah. Verse 46, 7, and 8, and 9. 46 through 49. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, truly, your God is the God of gods, the Lord of lords and a revealer of secrets since you could reveal this secret. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave Amen. him many great gifts and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also, then Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Wow, what a story. That tells it all. There's no explanation needed for that. But I tell you what, folks, I urge you and encourage you that if you have a situation that's life-threatening, go read this prayer again that Daniel prayed to the Lord. 
Meditate on it. And say, Lord, let me be Mm -hmm. like Daniel. Bold, but humble, confident, and knowing that you are going to take and do everything that I need. Yeah. All you have to do is believe, y'all. That is your part. It's the balance of grace and faith. He gives it all, and you believe and receive it. Your part is believing and receiving. And he had a spirit of excellence. excellence. Amen. Why don't y'all stand up with us? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I pray that y'all got something out of that. Because it blessed us. The more we were reading it, the more excited we got. And I thought, Lord, let us be like that. Let us be like Daniel. What an example. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never been born again, the Bible says you must be born again. If you want to spend eternity with God the Father, that's the only way to heaven. There's no other way to get there and be with with, uh, Jesus and the Father is except through Jesus. So if you haven't done that, you need to be born again. If you're in this sanctuary here, you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and be your Savior, and you've never been born again, please raise your hand, and we'll be glad to pray with you to to receive that prayer. We've got prayer ministers down here, and if that's you, we don't want you to leave here today without receiving uh, your salvation, receiving where you pass from death and you, you go over to life. You exchange your old sin nature for the nature of God, which is a nature of righteousness. You become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He makes you the righteousness of God. Independent of your performance, you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future, because you have a new nature then. So if you haven't done that and you're here in this sanctuary, we'd like for you to come down and and, uh, let one of these prayer ministers minister uh, salvation to you and receive it. If you're watching on live stream and you're not born again, you know in your heart you never asked Jesus to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior. You've never been born again. We, I'm going to pray a prayer, a short prayer here in just a moment. Regina's going to repeat after me. And if you're at home, you repeat this same prayer after me. The Word says you need to believe it in your heart. You need to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. And you will be saved. That's what the Word declares. You ready? All right. You at home. Do this. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I believe that Jesus is your only son. I believe that Jesus is your only son. I believe that he was born unto a virgin. I believe that he was born unto a virgin. On this earth. On this earth. He lived. He lived. He had a crucifixion. He had a crucifixion. A death. A death. And a burial. And a burial. And he was resurrected. And he was resurrected. With the power of God. By the power of God. He's seated at your right hand forevermore, He's Father. He's seated at your right hand forevermore, Father. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that He paid for all of my sins. I believe that He paid for all of my sins. Past. Past. Present. Present. And future. And future. And I believe that I'm getting ready to receive a new nature. I believe that I'm receiving a new nature. That I'm exchanging my old nature. That I'm exchanging my my old old sin nature. My old sin nature. For the nature of God. For the nature of God. And that's righteousness. And that's righteousness. Which will mean I'm in right standing with you, Father. Which means that I'm right standing with you, Father. I can justly call you Father. I can justly call you Father. And Jesus will be my elder brother. Jesus will be my elder brother. I will be joint heirs with him. I will be joint heirs with him. Thank you, Lord, that I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, that I am saved. Because I've confessed you with my mouth. Because I've confessed you with my mouth. That Jesus is my Lord and Savior. That Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I am now Savior. born again. I am now born again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Hallelujah. we rejoice with you right now. Hallelujah. And if you're watching on live stream and you did just that, if you follow along with that prayer, and that's not the prayer, but it is a, is a prayer of salvation. And you, repre- and you believed it in your heart and you, you confessed it with your mouth. You are born again. Please contact us at 404-697-5215. That's 404-697-5215. You contact us. We would love to hear your testimony of, of receiving Jesus. And also, we want to tell you of, of another thing that you can, a- after salvation is so important, 
to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And this invitation is also for anybody here in this sanctuary. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is when you receive the power of God, the infusion of God. You don't want to go through this life. Yes, being born again is everything. Yes, you will be going to heaven. Yes, you're a child of the King. But if you're going to walk in this life with the power of God flowing through you, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit Amen. with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And if you're on live stream, give us a call at that same number, 404-697-5215, and we will lead you in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you're here in this sanctuary, you've never been received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, please don't leave here without it. It's like the American Express card. Please don't leave home without it. Amen? So it's, it's there waiting on you. It's available. It's already paid for. It is a separate experience than salvation. Your salvation is not contingent on receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in other tongues. But you walking in the power is contingent on it. Amen? Walking in the power of God. And who wants to be powerless? The kingdom of God is about power. It's about being part of the kingdom and walking in that power. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, I believe that's about it, right? Amen. If you have any here, you can come down in just a minute. We're just getting ready to go and li on live stream. Bear with us just a minute. We're oh, winding down. We there want to is no Aletheia Bible study tonight. I mean, no, Tuesday night. Javan's Bible uh, study. Bible Aletheia study. Bible study they will not be, be this Tuesday Thursday. night. It'll be back in the saddle the following Tuesday after yes. they get back in town. Here. And remember, uh, Bible Tuesday, school 730. this, this Aletheia Bible study here in the sanctuary. From 8 to 5 on this, 845. I mean 845 to 5 o'clock this Saturday. One Saturday a month. This is and a Saturday. First time visitors. First time visitors. Sharon, stick your hand up in the air if you would, please. She's going to be like the Pied Piper. She's going to pull out her little flute and you just follow right behind her <laughs> and go in that little little room over there in the back that's with double doors on it. And she's going to, that's our hospitality room, and she's going to talk to you about lighthouses groups. There's a lighthouse group near your area. But I live out in Woodstock. We got plenty of them out there. We live on every side of town. We got lighthouse groups, so she can hook you up. Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. And feel free after we fin finish praying, then you can come down and veil yourself with these prayer ministers down front. If you need prayer or anything, they'll pray with you about healing. They'll pray with you about your uh, relationships or uh, uh, provision or anything. That'd be we're going to go ahead and say bye to live stream. Say bye to live stream. Thank, stream. You, so Thank much. you, live stream. We love you. For all we you in live stream you land. Thank you for joining Sunday us. Next Sunday at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Love you so same much. Same time, God same channel. You. Amen. All right, hallelujah. Let's close in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for your word that never, never, never returns void, but accomplishes that which it was sent forth to do, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that the word of God is stirred up inside of us, Lord, that is a, we know it's alive and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are consumed with your word, that your word is, comes out of our mouth, your word resides in our heart, Lord, and we don't ever take it for granted, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we walk